Let's continue. West of Loathing. Day three. Last time on West of Loathing, I was helping the Breadwood Mayor solve all of his problems. <laughs> we met Charlie, who runs a Blood and Breakfast, and it sounded a lot scarier than it actually was. Turns out he's harmless. He's just very misunderstood. We also got back a half-burnt library book that went missing. We collected soup in a mine. And we also got a logging permit through a 20 minute series of essentially attending the DMV. It was quite a ride. They were all ghosts. I wanted to strangle them, but they were already dead. <laughs> I highly, highly recommend checking out that segment of the last stream if you get a chance. Um, next, we are gonna be sorting out some trouble at a cemetery. I forgot I actually picked up that quest yesterday, so I had to go talk to him to remember what we were doing. So we're gonna go to the Military cemetery. You've been a bit a while lately, but glad that you get to see it now. Yeah, we're glad to have you, Zomi. Uh, this guy wants to fight me. Uh, I will intimidate him. And I will take his stuff. Yeah, that's right! Okay, military cemetery. Burial plots, eternal flame. There's a shovel. I, I'm pretty sure I have a shovel. It's the caretaker shanty. You poke around in the shed. The caretaker appears to have been shirking his duties for quite a while, judging by the dust and the cobwebs. Looks like the mayor was right about him having wandered off. Guess you're gonna have to fetch him back here to do his job. Look at the tools. Well, tool singular. There's a shovel here. Since you already have a shovel, you leave it alone. It's not like you'd be able to dig twice as fast. I'll show you! Oh yeah, there was there was also a haunted pickle factory. It was terrible. <laughs> Yesterday was like the weirdest combination of mental torture and humor. <laughs> I'm pulling under the chair. Like all chairs owned by one guy, it has years worth of lint and food crumbs underneath it. Oh yeah, also there was a circus full of clowns. No, I did not enjoy having a visitor's pass for Ghost Town that allowed me to exist there for 11 seconds. <laughs> Gross. Uh, scope out the desk. It's covered with old paint-spattered newspapers and features a large collection of tiny jars of paint as well as a jar of fine tip brushes, a can of thinner, and a stack of history books. Curious, you continue to poke around in the shed. Check out the flyers. You find a flyer for a military reenactment enthusiast society. Apparently they meet regularly at Fort Memoriam. You discovered a new map location, Fort Memoriam. Maybe that's where the caretaker went. All right. I kind of want to check this place out, though. Beyond this gate stands countless rows and columns of tombstones. Well, they're not actually countless. I've counted them, and there are 999 of them. You can visit an individual plot by number if you'd like. Oh. Okay, what about Eternal Flame? It's literally just a guy at a giant tombstone cooking a hot dog. <laughs> Caution! Do not touch Eternal Flame. Is this burning an eternal flame? Yes! I don't think that's what the eternal flame is for, Mr. Goblin. Nine oh my god, you're right! It is 999 happy haunts like Disneyland! Hi, Kaylin! How are you doing today? Hi, Link! How are you? Um... 
I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to do that. No, he's good fire, not to wasting it. I'm gonna fight you. I guess, because there's no talk option. Um, sir, that is a very large stack of hot dogs, and I'm gonna have to confiscate those. Goblin Bratwurst. Hooray! The flames over that way are all short-lived and uninteresting. <laughs> okay. Alright, I guess there's nothing else. Wait, 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 wait. That had a joke on it. Hmm. I hope you didn't invest in a hedge fund, because these are now just a pointy, worthless mess. Got it. There are hedges. Hedges, 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 hedges. 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 All right, let's go to Fort Treason. Wait, that's not the place that I was supposed to go. Uh, you know what? We're definitely gonna stop and investigate this well instead. Ooh, let's attach a rope and climb down the well. Oh, hey, look, a teleporter. It's lifeless. Mm. Push the button. You press the button and the machine speaks. The voice says, Ganilla. Seven buttons appear on top of the platform. Look at them. Uh, I'm definitely gonna push the third button. The terminal emits a harsh buzz. The seven buttons disappear and the original one button appears again. A voice says, Poo poo. Uh, do it again? So I'm guessing that we maybe could eventually understand this language. But we don't. We don't understand this language. I could just try to force it. Uh, I don't know. What about the small punch? Oh, that's how you learn the language with the punch cards. I learned the word for local coffee maker and array. Terminal teleporter facility. Toggle emergency corruption. Sedative sustenance updated. Magnitude quick gate. Decloaker antipsychotic drone. Municipal personnel. Reactor, beacon. Okay, I learned a bunch of words. Stop, 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 stop. Oh, hey! The terminal emits a reassuring tone. You've learned the El Verbato word for the number one. Ooh, I'm learning numbers. What about three? Oh, okay, I just, I, I thought maybe because it said sta sa, because it's two syllables, that it was two, but no, because ganilla would be three, and I pushed three and it didn't work. <laughs> oh, I love the bangles. Hi, Dar, how are you doing? This is the first time you've been able to watch. You have no idea what this game is or what's happening, but the art's hilarious. <gasps> Kayling, this is West of Loathing, and it was $8 on Steam, and it is so good. <laughs> it's really, really well written. <laughs> it's really well written. Let's see. It's basically just an RPG that is chock full of humor. Apparently it's also available on the Switch, which I didn't know. Absolutely been worth the money. Also, hi Ash, how are you doing today? Uh, Ganilla, what about seven? Hey, I learned the El Verbato word for the number three. Potata. Oh, 
poo poo. A nun. I don't know. This is all guesswork. Okay. The number six. The number five. Number two, a voice says five. Okay. Wait, okay, so we need to do the one below it. Okay. So a voice says five, so we press four. No? A voice says four. I press four, and it... Okay, I don't get it, so I'm gonna just leave. We'll come back to this. I at least learned the numbers. Remind me to come back to the Curious Abandoned Well. Hi, Sweet, how are you? Fort Memoriam, I think that's where we were actually supposed to go. Maybe. These guys have cool Viking hats. How many people would walk around in a cow hat in this day and age? Oh, never mind, it's a cow hat. Not to imply they were ever in fashion or anything. Hi, I'm Yada. Hey, I'm Melvin. Are you the cemetery caretaker? Nope, I think Jeff said something about having a day job. It hasn't been that day for like two weeks, though. <laughs> What's with a hat? We're doing historical reenactments. You're playing a tabletop war game. Well, okay, sure, but a historical one. Anyway, we only switched to this after we quit doing real reenactments. Why'd you quit? It was too much exercise. Also, somebody kept refusing to lie down when he got killed. You missed. <laughs> oh my God, they're arguing about LARPing. <laughs> Ooh, mutable. <laughs> Yeah, my birthday's coming up next Friday. But you didn't miss it though, because it's next Friday. Also, Paper Mario's coming out, and I'm really excited for it. Hi, honey, Bees. Welcome back. How are you doing? Yay, thank you, Insane Man. Also, hi, Clue. How are you doing today? Um, let's ask. What, what's, what, so what game are you playing? What's this game you're playing? Oh, you probably aren't familiar with this type of board game. It's a very specialized form of entertainment. Oh, I see. So this guy is a hipster. <laughs> you know, um, this is a very special board game. You've probably never heard of it. <laughs> what I mean is, you seem to be using Flint Rock, Flint Block 4000 rules, but my brother said didn't have cows. Oh. Uh, well, yeah, we had to mod them in ourselves. Cool, huh? Can I play? Well, the rules are pretty complex. I don't think the others will want to stop to play a teaching game. I already know it. My brother used to bug me to play him all the time so he could test his strategies. Then great, yeah, we're short a player on the cows' side. Step up to the table and grab some dice. Yay, we're gonna play a board game! Also, I'm taking this candy. This guy's eating chips like they're going out of style. Wait, he's a nerd. Nerds don't care about what's in style. <laughs> You're melting, oh no! 
I'm sorry, Koo. I hope you can cool off soon. I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. And you're doing good. I'm glad to hear that, honeybee. Uh, this guy is excitedly and repeatedly describing his favorite kinetoscope reel. Mom made Rufus stop drinking that brand of soda after he didn't sleep for four days and started yammering about putting our cat in a box to see if it was alive or not. So, apparently... Apparently, Jolt Soda would make you want to try out Schrodinger's cat as a real-life experiment. Don't do that. Hi, I'm Yida. Hi, I'm Jeff. Are you the cemetery caretaker? Yeah, that's me. So what do the other guys tell you? I try to keep it hushed because people assume you're a weirdo if you work in a graveyard. I'm actually here to tell you to get back to work because skeletons are wandering out of the place and causing trouble for the neighbors. Aw, oh, nuts. Well, look, I'm on a real winning streak here. I'll go back once it's over, okay? I will intimidate you! No. Look, dude. This is your job we're talking about. Take some responsibility and go do your job if you want to keep it. Aw, oh, come on! Sorry to hassle you, but this is important! You gotta keep those soldiers in their holes. All right, fine. Sorry, guys. My mom says I have to go. He leaves with a dramatic eye roll and the other nerd snick. <laughs> this is too real. This guy doesn't seem interested in the game. He's just noodling around on his guitar. Hi, Onik. How you doing? Oh, there's a smelly pile of trash. Okay, well, obviously we have to dig through that. <laughs> Kurt's fit pants. Oh, yes! Oh my god, yes! I needed those! Oh my god, I needed those pants! This is perfect! Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. I have the headband, I have the pants. We can go work out now. Also, apparently if I had 25 mysticality, I could study that. So hang on, let me put on this other hat real quick. You pour over the rules until you understand them perfectly enough to realize that they're for an entirely different game than these guys are actually playing. Oh well, at least you learned something useful. As you're about to walk away from the shelf, you notice a book that definitely doesn't belong here. You got an item, Frightening Topics and Next Max. Hey Jade. Oh no, did your power go out? I, I hope it comes back soon if it's not already. Raise skeletal thrall skill. Uh, you know, I really do not feel like Alice would like that. <laughs> All right, well, now I don't technically have to play board games. So, I mean, board games are cool, but so is finishing the main story. I just intimidated that guy instead. So now he should be back in the cemetery. Uh, oh, not the shroom cave. Where's the other place? Fort of Darkness. That's where the hippies are. Let's go do some jazzercise with the hippies. That's the plan. Because I was missing the pants before. And now I have the outfit, so maybe they'll let me do jazzercise with them. I think it was this one. Rude, what is this button? Ron, thank you for Ray 7 for 23 months. Welcome back to Jazzercise. Hi, how are you? Hi, Chaos. Thank you for the host. 
Yes, I guess we could use some color slash. How are you? <laughs> Hi, Brian C. Good to see you guys. So, all right, I just got the pants. Can I exercise with you? Yay! I did it! Look, Mom, I'm dancing! Power surges through you. You have unlocked true potential. You got a perk. Curtsy and physique. <gasps> Turns out that guy is onto something. You really do feel stronger. We got plus 10 muscle from that? Dude, okay, that's actually super worth. That was mega super worth it. I'm so glad I found those pants. All right, I'm gonna put my Stetson back on. Let's see, and I'm, I'm actually gonna put the thick leather pants back on because they have three armor. But hell yeah, super muscle. Let's go back to the cemetery. Uh, I'm gonna threaten this guy. I threatened him with ducks. Why would we not be in a tent though? The caretaker's sleeping off all that war game adrenaline. It's probably best not to bother him. Okay. I don't know, maybe we'll just go back to Breadwood and see if getting that guy back was enough. Oh, I would like to fight the two skeletons, please. In this case, yes, Phineas, because I needed those pants. Oh wait, shoot, this is a skeleton. I could have just killed him. In this case, I actually needed those pants in order to get plus 10 muscle. So it, it was worth it. And Alice gets to study those. <gasps> Chaos, how dare you? This is a wonderful game. <laughs> You're pretty all right though. Usually I should probably sleep more, but cool people to hang out with. <laughs> I feel that. This game is definitely aces for you, Sadly Duty Calls. It's been an interesting 2020, but you now have an awesome partner and a more amazing stepson. Aw, that's wonderful, Kaylee. Enjoy family time. It's super good to see you. Welcome back. You have a wonderful evening. You keep cool, too. Did you sort out that trouble at the cemetery? Yeah, the caretaker's back on duty. Well, that's certainly good to hear. Those skeletons were a real nuisance. They sure do have a way of getting under your skin. <laughs> the mayor glances at the list of pro The mayor ignored my joke entirely. Uh, about the lumber. <gasps> oh, I finished enough things. Yay. All right. Well, you've helped me out quite a bit. So I reckon I can set you up with what you need for that bridge. Thanks. Cool. Um, I mean, I guess I could finish the rest of the problems anyway. We take our yeast supply very seriously here in Redwood, and that dang yeasty gang made off with a whole lot. Couple of fellas sell, they sell them loitering around the old brewery, so that's probably where they made their hideout. We need that yeast back. Okay, I'll go investigate that. Why not, right? If I use the pants as a melee weapon, you can forgive it. I don't think pants are a weapon in this game, but I am using a giant cactus as a weapon. What does that count for? Almost bedtime for you, only 10 p.m. there. It's only seven here, but I know that not everybody stays up till three o'clock in the morning like I do. <laughs> Wait, beer hose? You're not really sure what purpose it might have served. Oh, I do. This fella is too scared to talk to you, okay? I like to sample the, ew. Okay, the beer was almost pure ethanol. That's, 
I'd like to grab this dead guy's hat. It's covered in yeast, plus five mysticality. He hello? I will fight you, giant yeast beast. That counts for spiky doom? Excellent. I can almost one turn this guy. Bam. Ooh, he gave me 200 XP. <gasps> Speaking of which, oh my God, so close. I need 45 XP to get lock pick and expertise three out of three. I mean, that was really close, Roomba. You go to bed at 3 a.m., wake up at 7 each day for work. Oh my goodness, binary. <laughs> Dude, I don't know how you function. I can't, I have to get like at least eight hours of sleep a day or I, I start to slowly fade away like a ghost at a DMV. <laughs> also true, we can't really tell if we're wearing the pants like pants because there are no pants on the stick figures. Hi, Hispanic. How are you? Wait, what do you mean no one stays up to watch anime at 3 a.m.? I didn't say no one. There are definitely some people that do stay up to watch anime until 3 a.m. Or at 3 a.m. Um, sure. I will take half a ton of yeast. So this whole yeast theft phase doesn't seem to have gone well for you guys. Yeah, no, I... Oh, jeez. Are you a bounty hunter? Relax, the mayor just wants his yeast back. He didn't say anything about hauling you in. Whew. Okay, well the yeast is in that revolving pile. So what happened here? Well, we got bored of bread is all. I, I know a bit about brewing and we figured if we came back with a couple kegs, nobody would mind so much that we stole the yeast. No offense, but it seems like you aren't much of a brewer. Hey! Well, ideally you wouldn't end up with a ravenous yeast monster. That wasn't my... Okay, well, I guess it was my fault, but I understand what happened. These vats are old, and we didn't clean them properly first because we were in a hurry. I think there were some frogs living in one of them. Ew! 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 There were frogs! Eh. And you figured you could use the extra hops? Ha ha ha! If you're sure you got it figured out, you could set up shot and shop in dirt water. Oh? Yeah, it's turned into quite a little metropolis. I'd love to have my own place. Okay, I'll check it out. <gasps> Yay! That guy's gonna go make frog beer. Uh, I I guess I'll arrest him. You're under arrest! For what? Stealing about two handfuls of yeast? Yes. And the sentence for that is what? About three days in jail? Uh... And Breadwood does not actually have a jail. All right, I'll let you off with a warning this time. <laughs> why doesn't Breadwood have a jail? <laughs> no wonder why they're stealing your yeast. You don't have a jail. There's no consequences. <laughs> Hi, Rydor. How are you doing? 2 to 2.30 a.m. to 9 is your usual sleep time. Yes. Okay, I'm glad, I'm glad to hear you got power back. I'm sorry it was out for so long, Jade. Just chilling. Glad to hear it, Hispanic. You get about six hours and you've fallen asleep a couple of times after work finishes. Hey, don't you don't have to be shy about falling asleep during the stream. Hell, I'm honestly honored that the stream is comfortable enough to fall asleep to. You were watching the Highlander TV show on Tubi the other day till 3 a.m.? How's the Highlander TV show? I still need to watch Highlander the movie. You can't sleep more than seven hours, so you tend to stay up till you're passing out in your chair, then go to bed. Actually, my brother-in-law does that binary. He usually will uh, stay up in his chair until he falls asleep. He'll wake up in his chair and then go to bed. <laughs> Any luck recovering our yeast from those bandits up in the old small brewery? Yep. Well done, that's quite a help, thank you. Uh, you have one more problem that I suppose I could help you with. The missing bread! 
The Baker Boys cleaned our bank right up. That's not a bit fabulous if you ask me. Fortunately, they haven't been too secretive about the location of their hideout. Can you get our bread back? I mean, the place is called Breadwood. We ought to have some bread. 32 bard bluff. 32 bard Thank you so much for 32 months. Add to you two. Welcome back. I super appreciate it. How are you today? You're doing good, Ryor. I'm glad to hear it. I'm doing well today. Thank you for asking. Let's see. Lock picking. Nice. All right, there were. Oh man, I don't think I wrote down where to go lock picking, which I really should have realized that I would have forgotten where to go by now. I want to say there was something in Alexandria Ranch. Hey, chat! Does anybody happen to remember where some of those places were that required level 3 lockpicking that I went to yesterday? <laughs> I forgot. You're doing well, Faye. I'm glad to hear that. I'm so great, thank you for asking. Let's see. Yeah, maybe it wasn't over here. Must not have been. Maybe the ranch? The West Pole? Um, I will investigate that momentarily. Hi, Shellyak, how are you? Oh wait, yeah, this is the place where I can make stuff and also farm cows. Kellogg Ranch? Oh, doing good? Just working away? Oh, it's your Friday. Nice. The villains are pretty real in the TV show. The movies are super villains. Yeah! Yeah, they were lockers. Um. Maybe. Was that in one of the mines, maybe? Or there is the. Yeah, there is this gym. Oh, yeah! Oh my god, it is in here. Yeah, that's right. It was in here in, in Kellogg's. There we go. I got a cowboy chef's hat and Kellogg's Grain Flakes recipe. <laughs> the recipe reads, four parts barley, one part oats, three parts spelt. Press to 91 PSI. Cook for eight minutes, 640 degrees. Um, okay. Give me them hot secrets. <clears throat> you pick up the diary and blow off some of the dust. The cover says, The Diary of Blank Smith. The first name is worn away, but you can tell it was longer than seven letters. Hey! That's that lady. That's that puzzle with that lady. Longer than seven letters. Okay, that's important. <laughs> Sadly, the contents aren't particularly juicy. The author joined Kellogg's health program because she'd had several relatives with poor health and wanted to preserve her own. She found the ranch to be pretty boring, but appreciated that the lack of anything much else to do gave her plenty of time to spend knitting, which was her favorite hobby. Yup. The last entry mentions Kellogg's death, rumored but unconfirmed to be due to a brain aneurysm caused by outrage at hearing a dirty joke. 
<laughs> and that the author was returning home. Guess she forgot the diary when she left. All right, so yeah, we know for sure that her name has more than seven letters. I got four needles and some laudanum. Oh, and a full set of Kurtzfit stuff. Which would have been helpful had I not found it elsewhere. Alright, and then I believe the barn was also locked. How many meat to spell the name, though? I have no idea, Bardo. How are you doing today? Yes, John! Also, now I want seven scoops of ice cream, please. How are you doing? Good to see you guys. Go inside the barn. Whoa, there's a lot of grain here. If you ever need a lot of grain, you know where to find it. You got a perk, unlimited grain. Okay. Unlimited grain. I don't know when I'm going to need that, but... Sure. <laughs> Obviously, at some point, I I'm gonna find somebody that needs brain, I guess. I also got some barbed wire. Endless stacks of grain. Hi, Trop. Yeehaw! Have you yeed your last haul, Tropical Freeze 21? All right, I want to see what the West Pole is. Oh, <gasps> yes, Wandering Sally! Oh, I actually don't need anything from you. Dang it. I mean, I guess I could buy this, this, I'll, I'll buy that. And those are extras now. Ooh! That guy has plus five muscle. Yeah, I guess I pretty much bought everything from Wander and Sally. Mmm, unlimited bread. And a medical gun. Plus 30 maximum health. If you don't think about it too much, a pistol is just a more effective syringe. I don't know about that. <laughs> about that, but okay. <laughs> Science facts. Ooh, I want to make something suave. Heavy... Okay, I, I made an okay symbol. Um, what's what perk did I get? Heavy trigger finger. Oh, plus thirty, plus three. Let's make a tower, heart of stone. Let's make. Oh. I guess. Okay, I can get a perk for each one of those. Let's make another tower. Let's make another tower. 
Why is it bent like this? I don't know. Cool, more free perks. Song of the Spheres gives plus five spell damage. Hi, Jin, how are you doing? Also, I'm doing really well, Tra. Thank you for asking, how are you doing today? I did grain something important at that location. <laughs> Let's see, uh, Baker Boy's hideout. There is a hulking robot. Let's fight it. Fight the robot. Na 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 na. Fight the robot. Na 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 na. Thank you. I am excellent at breaking gravity and all other logical things in video games. You're here, and that's good enough today. <laughs> You know, honestly, that was me a lot the past couple of weeks, so I can empathize with that. I am also glad you're here. These teenagers seem dispirited and are trying to drown their sorrows with big mugs of water. Maybe they misunderstood the idiom. <laughs> hey, you boys wouldn't know about some bread that went missing, would you? Oh, nuts. I told you we get in trouble, Billy. Shut up, Jerry. Way to blab everything, dude. Calm down, you two. The mayor just wants his bread back. Hand it over and the trouble you're in will be minimal. It ain't that simple, lady. We stole that bread from meat to start this bakery. Why? Because we wanted to make something of our lives. Everything in Breadwood is just bombs. Plus, like, everyone needs bread, right? So we figured we'd make it big. Okay, well, no problem. We take the mayor the bread you've made and call it even. Oh yeah, no problem. Except for the fact we don't know a dang thing about making bread, it turns out. All we ended up with are weird lumps. Oh, that ain't true, Billy. The last loaf we tried was almost right. Yes, yeah, sure. That one was nearly edible, but we're practically out of ingredients. You mean you need grains? You mean you need an endless supply of grains? I know a place where you can get more grain. They have so much, they'll never notice if you boys take some on the quiet. Hey, that sounds like a good deal. We wouldn't even need much, just enough to figure out the recipe out and start making enough meat to buy our own. Okay, I'll draw you a map. The Baker boys sneak out to Kellogg Ranch to filch a few bags of grain. After a couple of tries, the boys hit on a decent bread recipe and bake enough to cover what they stole from the mayor. Yay! Uh, if bread were money, these boys, boys would be rich now. This shelf is comprehensively breaded. Staff of life. Bread! Glorious, glorious bread. Have a good night, Camp Louie. Thank you for joining us. You're glad you're watching this in the correct time zone for once. Oh, yeah, did you, uh, I guess you, you made it back home okay, John? How'd the trip go? Ooh, I'm going to banish it with a maintenance teleporter. Uh, your El Bravado. Okay, I, I don't know what that means though. Oh, oh, okay. I thought I got stuck over there, but nope. Confounded contraptions, dark and silent. This machine's not switched on, but it has an empty coffee cup in it. I do have a battery. Ooh, I get an effect energized. You learn the El Verbata word for brooch and refreshment. Okay, I guess I need more batteries for that. Wow, though. That's a really big teleporter. Uh, I'm gonna int intimidate this guy. I don't remember if I actually moved it forward a day to talk to this grandma or not. Okay, okay. 
So she has more than seven letters in her name. And she loves knitting. Another two days. How's LA treating ya? Okay, she said not buried next to her daughters. She passed at the same age as Becky. <sighs> I guess I should take a look at every Becky. <laughs> Okay, well, let's see, that or that would be 24. Little Becky Smith, who died 16. We already got first Becky. Mezzo Becky. Died at 50. Okay, so the there's four Beckys. One died at 38, one at 24, one at 16, one at 50. So then we need to find someone with more than seven letters in their name who died at one of these ages. That's seven. Pen ultimate, I mean, that, that is Becky, so it can't be her. No, Penelope is eight letters and she died at 50 okay so it could be Penelope Patricia she died when she was 24 okay Nors, not enough letters. That's seven. Okay. Margaret. Can't be Margaret because she died really old. She didn't die at an age of one of the Beckys, so it's not Margaret. Madeline Smith. Died when she was 39? So no, it can't be Madeline. Meredith Smith. I don't think it can be Meredith Smith either because let's see, that'd be... Yeah, that'd be 37, so no. Not Meredith Smith. Magdalene. 
died when she was 23, so it can't be her. Sarah doesn't have enough letters. Melissa doesn't have enough letters. So it's gotta either be Penelope or Patricia. other things. First name ends in a vowel. They both do. They were between, okay, she was between 37 and 42 when they were born. Okay, so the grandma died when she was like 90 something? You rest well. Today turned into an adventure to get some Taco Bell that may have taken you all the way to Koreatown. Oh, dang, really? Uh, let's see. Not buried next to the daughters. See, this actually is hard because... Okay, Paula is definitely a daughter. So is Leslie, though. Isn't that technically next to both? Using. Oh, okay, eighteen twenty two. So, wait, I don't know if either of them are. Yo, that's mega unhelpful. <laughs> right there. Shit. I don't know if it's Patricia or Penelope. <laughs> Sorry, how you doing? This puzzle is evil, that's all you'll say. Okay, part of the problem is I don't actually know what year it is. I don't even know what year it is in the game right now. I legitimately don't know what year it is in the game. Sure, Ku, what's an unhelpful hint? <laughs>
Just guess. <laughs> okay. Fine. Uh, let's start with a P. Was it P? Trisha. I hate this lady. I hate, I hate her. Why can't you just re Seriously, if she was your favorite granddaughter, why do you not remember her name, you dingus? Well, it's not Patricia. So then it's probably Penelope, but now I don't want to go resettle my buffs. Heckin' lady. I'll try that on the next day. Military school class ring. I don't want that. Ooh, that wait, that was a key to a P.O. box? <gasps> it's the key to a post office box in Dirtwater! Poggers! Also, hey, Private Lemon! Private Lee Lemon! Private Lemon's diary is pretty dry and not very interesting. Just to listen to the day-to-day -day duties of a straight, straight laced soldier up in the hills without anything to fight. Towards the end, though, it starts to mention their commanding officer, Captain Simon, uh, becoming increasingly agitated and convinced that a nearby ranch is being used as a spy outpost. Lemon doesn't sound convinced, but as one annoyingly vague entry puts it, orders are orders. The last few entries have to do with descent in the ranks and the possibility of mutiny. The thought of which Lemon abhors. The rest of the pages are blank. I actually picked Patricia because of the vine uh, where the guy yells, PATRICIA! <laughs> Sorry, honey, I'm just trying to do something. Can you be a little more quiet? I'm trying to do something. <laughs> okay, let's go back to Breadwood. I mean, the guy's probably dead, Bardo. Mutiny in Fort Treason? How unexpected. <laughs> Hi, Mew. How are you doing? You can't fight in here. This is a war room. Uh, yeah, I got the bread back. Uh, the mayor looks pretty relaxed now that the camp only has one problem. Wait, it has a problem? I literally fixed all the problems, I thought. Oh. You read the list of Redwood's problems. Bad lumber deal. We're giving lumber to the railroad company for, like, no meat at all, and that's bad. Note. <laughs> okay, so apparently we fixed seven problems and gave them another one. All right, let's go to the railroad camp. You're doing all right, finally hit 1031 in D2. Nice, Mew. Hey, I have over 500 hours in the game and sometimes I still don't know what I'm doing, so that is totally okay. As long as you're having fun, that's what matters. Mm, can't have my guys jelly beans still. Hi. Hey boss, good news! We got that lumber shipment in from Redwood and we're ready to go! You got the bridge built already? Yep, most of the passengers were so bored they chipped in to help! Wow, nice! Now we just have to lay tracks the rest of the way into Frisco and our work is done! Both mine and yours! See you there, boss! See ya! Let's go to Frisco! 
look at the wooden bridge you built with your own two hands by using those two hands to provide services for the Breadwood Lumberjacks, I mean. Yes, my own two hands. I made this, Smiley. <laughs> I made this. Let's go to Frisco. The bleeping of your El Vibrato transponder leads you to a hulking robot. Absolutely, I'm gonna fight the giant robot. Wait, uh, which which movie, Hogwarts? I'm pretty sure you can't fight in here. This is a war moose from, like, Airplane or something? Or another movie that the guy from Airplane is in? I think it's from another movie that the guy from Airplane is in that I've only seen once, so I can't remember. Oh, wait, that's from Dr. Strangelove! They have, like, Dr. Strangelove... Uh, and the movies that that dude is in from Airplane have a lot of the, like, similarities in their sense of humor. <laughs> I've also only seen Dr. Strangelove once, but it's a good movie. <laughs> Howdy, Alice. Do you like custard? What? I uh, there's a good custard stand out this way. Kind of a tourist attraction thing. Is it in a graveyard? No, it's just a custard stand, far as I know. Oh, cool. The last custard stand. <laughs> uh, yeah, thanks for the reminder. I, I don't know if I'm gonna get that guy a picture or not. Yes, yes it is, Sheliak. <laughs> that doesn't make you uncultured, Hogwarts. Hi, Alyssa, how are you doing? I mean, hey, I haven't actually watched Sword Out Online, so. What's going on, Smee? This fancy pants calls himself the Emperor, and he won't let us build our tracks up to the station. Can you see if you could talk some sense into him? I'm on it. Frisco City Limit. Uh, this guy is collapsing while doing yoga. Who the heck are you? I'm Emperor Norton! I'm in charge of this city and you can't build any train tracks here without my permission! An emperor? Where's your crown then? As it happens, I lost my dang crown. The thing didn't fit right anyway, but without it, I can't issue any official permits and that means no rails for you. And that's of course... You would have given me a new crown. A properly fitting one. I don't have any crowns. Sorry. Well, I guess that just tears it, doesn't it? So not only do you not get that permit, but also... He reaches into his pocket and grabs a handful of powder, which he throws in your face. Your eyes burn. Ha! Have a taste of my famous antivirus, sucker! Your vision goes all weird and you pass out. Wait, what? What the hell was that? When you come to, Norton is gone and so is the train. Uh... I now I... Now I have ant vision. <laughs> Norton ant eye virus. <laughs> Pocket sand. <laughs> Where'd the train go? That lunatic stole it. He drove it off somewhere into the desert. Norton's gone off the rails. <laughs> oh my god. Norton and I virus has gone off the rails, chat. Who would have thought? <laughs> he points to a set of deep ruts onto the side of the railroad tracks. You walk over to investigate, but you can't see it because of this weird hexagon thing your eyes are doing. 
You should probably get that checked out, boss. That Norton fella said something about an ant eye virus. Maybe someone around here knew something about that. Yeah, probably. Oh, man. I so hope. Yes, please roast McAfee in this, too. If you're going to roast Norton Antivirus, please, please, please also roast the hell out of McAfee. However you see it. McAfee, McAfee, whatever. Just roast them. Uh, now playing Projectionist Wanted. Word on the street is that Projectionist Wanted 2 is already in the works. You don't look well. <laughs> yeah, and I can't say well either. Who oh, knew? Did that rascal Norton do this to you? He was raving about some sort of anti virus earlier. Bard yell, so anyway, I started blasting. <laughs> so many thank you for the 250 bits, pretty much. Any idea how I fix this? You know a feller named Roy Bean? The one that collects all kinds of jelly beans? I think maybe he's got one made of honey and that it can help with your predicament? That makes zero sense, but I suppose I don't have a better plan. Are you serious? Roy beat as in that dude that I helped get back his jelly beans to a series of wacky adventures? All right, well... Also, he wanted to charge like... 5,000 meat for that honey jelly bean so let's hope he's willing to cut us a deal since we helped him out i'm gonna attack this even though, <laughs> even though my vision is so fucked <laughs> ants don't carry disease they have antibodies for <laughs> Thank you, Phineas, for the 300 bits! I am so tall! Alrighty, Fishy, thank you for joining us. You rest well. Have a wonderful night. This is so good. Yeah, I also hope we can unlock this as a filter. Roy Bean, help! <laughs> Help, my head is huge! <laughs> Does this mean, um... Does this mean I finally have the aforementioned galaxy brain? <laughs> Do I have the galaxy brain? I think so. Look at me and my galaxy brain. <laughs> I'm crying. This is so funny. Look at my eyes. <laughs> cost 6,000 meat. Well, normally it does, yes, but I guess seeing as how you help me out with them bandits and goblins and damn dirty hippies, let's call her five. Five me? Really? Yeah, I reckon. Better buy it in a hurry before I change my mind. Yes. You hand over the meat. You almost feel bad because of the depth of the discount. I don't. Give me that honey jelly jelly bean. Look at this toilet. Toilet. <laughs> 
I am now really glad that I helped out Roy Bean. Roy Bean's Jelly Bean Museum. Uh, okay, I'm gonna eat it. You eat the jelly bean and your vision immediately clears. Modern medicine is really amazing. Hey, I fixed it. I did it, you guys. I fixed it. Let's go to the last custard stand. Hi, Ryu. How are you doing? I mean, I don't know. I don't. I would say that fixing my vision was definitely worth 6,000 meat. But I got it for five, so I'm not gonna say no to that. The bleeping, oh, oh, okay. This is just another one of these fights. You're doing well, I'm glad to hear that, Rio. Bonk, 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 bonk. I fixed it by making it worse? Yes. Fine custard. Ah. Well, howdy there! Welcome to the last custard stand! I'm Custard Man Stan, and I make custard like only Custard Man Stan can! Can I try some? Tell me about your custard stand, Custard Man Stan! Not much to tell, just a plain honest custard stand selling plain honest custard! But it's the last one? What, like the last one before you get to Frisco, or...? Last one of the whole territory! Heck, the last one of the whole world so far as I know, but I can't swear to that! Hmm, are you sure it ain't the first? Yep, cause the first one was also mine. It was further up north. Whole dang operation was ate by wasps. Stand it all. Give me them sweet custards. Custard man stand. With your custard stand. Ra Ew, raisin custard, gross. I will take the uh, vanilla custard, please. Thank you. Let's blow this custard stand. No, there's no oatmeal custard. You missed the anti-filled. <laughs> you go to get the train back. This is embarrassing. Me points to that set of deep ruts off to the side of the railroad tracks. Norton's taking the train off somewhere in the desert. You have to follow him. I'll see what I can do. Oh, I don't. Oh, that says Cloonies. I thought that said Gloomies. To a flyer of some sort, you got a comedy flyer. You read the garbage. It turns out to be a flyer for a comedy shack up north of Frisco. You jot down the location on your map and throw the flyer away. Wasco's Comedy Shack. <laughs> that sounds great, actually. It's just nearly identical houses as far as the eye can see in that direction. Actually, before we do that, let's go to Dirt Water because I have that P.O. Box key to use. You like raisins, just not in custard. <laughs> Hi, Orma. How are you doing? I think it's custard as in pudding. It looks like a bowl of pudding. Liquid Bread Brewing Co. Oh, hey, it's you. Thanks for telling me about this place instead of arresting me or shooting me ahead and then arresting me. I guess word's been getting around. Also, does that happen often where people shoot people in the head and then arrest them? Because I don't feel like that's going to work out very well. <laughs> Well, you sure did help me out. I really appreciate the opportunity. Things are going pretty well. Not a single yeast monster yet. <laughs> All right, what do you, what do you sell? Hmm. Micro brews with mu okay, cool. Yay! I got a package from Rufus. Also, I'd like to send another postcard. Thank you. A portable leather workbench. Oh, sweet! I will open box 114. You open the box. It's empty except for a single sheet of cardstock with columns of numbers on it in tiny print. 
Who got an item? Fort Treason Ballistics Chart. This chart is full of details on the precision firing of the Dimmy Culverin artillery cannon. You know what? I bet that cannon could blow up the vault door at Alexandria Ranch open if you could figure out a way to target it. Oh, snap! Yo, I didn't think about that! I'm gonna install that, and then... I also had a lava lamp that I got. Where did that go? Where did my lava lamp go? I was gonna install my lava lamp. But it's probably down here a ways. We found that at some point yesterday. No, we didn't drink the lava lamp. Oh my god, why would I drink a lava lamp, Barry? <laughs> was it called Strange? Yeah, I think it was called Strange Lamp or something. Oh, there it is. Found it. Groovy. Yay! Now I have a groovy lamp. And also a leatherworking stand. Nice. I'm doing so many things you missed in your playthrough. Yeah, it sounds like it's time to do another playthrough coup. Hi, Nehru. No, thankfully you do not have to send any paperwork, paperwork into anyone to send this message. Hi, how are you doing? Hi, Zeno. Hi, Chadra. Let's be real, with the tone of this game, they'd probably let you drink it and then give you an amazingly silly groovy filter or something. That's true. That's a really good point. Hi, SOG, how are you? Oh, you bought the DLC, nice. Gonna do another ride in a few weeks. Let me know how you like the DLC, Koo. I might consider picking that up too. All right, so... Let's go to the circus, actually. Uh... Hang on, I just want to stop the stab is down. I just, I just, just excuse me, Mr. Random Event. Do, 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 do. Oh. Okay, the dang it. That's what I wanted to check. All right, stage show's not ready yet. All right, so in that case, let's go to Fort Treason and see if we can figure out how to aim the cannons at Alexandria Ranch. I do have a handstand walk. Yeah, there's DLC. I don't know if it's on the Switch or not. You're doing a K ornament, just semi lurking. Oh, you're heading into work? I hope you have a good day at work. Team Posen to establish dominance. This must have been where they stored all of the fire. Hi, Mr. Mike. How are you? All right. Let's look closely. Uh, insert your cannonball. You look for the rangefinder in the cannon, but you can't see any indication of anything you want to shoot at. You decide not to waste the ball. Hmm... Wait. If you could figure out a way to target it. Okay. So we need a way to target it.
Yeah, I don't think we found something for that yet. Let's go to the comedy shack. That's your favorite gag of the whole game. <laughs> Good old shed of fire. <laughs> and it burns, burns, burns. That shed of fire. That shed of fire. A cobra. Alexa, how do I steal a cannon? What's up, Doc? Alice stops and sniffs the air. You smell that? No. It's real faint. I only caught a whiff, but there's a distillery nearby. Good grief, Alice. It's like you got super wino powers. Hey, now. I object to being characterized as some kind of lush. I am a connoisseur of only the finest of hooches. Okay, okay. Let's check it out. <laughs> the moon shines still. Okay. Howdy, howdy, howdy! Wasco Shafter's the name and comedy is the game! Are you here for a real thigh slapping? Good time! Uh. Alright, hit me. Okay, so a skeleton walks into a bar, and the bartender says, Wait, it's a horse, not a skeleton. Sorry. Anyway, after that, the bartender asks the horse, Hey, why is your face so long, buddy? That's it. Wasco takes a bow. Want to hear another one? Sure. You hand over the meat and Wasco clears his throat. <clears throat> Alright, a guy walks into a bar. And the bartender says, Sorry, we don't serve goblins here. Oh wait, I forgot to mention the guy's a goblin. Anyway, um, the end. Hit me. Okay, here's a good one. Take my wife, please! Uh, please? Okay. <laughs> no, I think I'm good. I don't want to hear any other jokes from Wasco's Comedy Shack. <laughs> Funny jokes, oh my! Aw, uh, let's go get some moonshine. I'm gonna need it after those jokes. I don't know why I'm bothering to do this, because I can just murder this skeleton for free. No, that's not the Emperor, but he is a bearded skeleton. Maybe they're related. I don't know. The guy said they were jokes. I, I don't I don't necessarily believe it. There's a jar of moonshine under the spout. I'ma take it. Ooh, it's a still for turning moon into moonshine. Yep, that's definitely how moonshine works. <laughs> That's definitely how moonshine works, everyone! Alright, I guess we'll go back to Frisco now. I don't have the battery. I guess so, the joke was on me for paying him meat. Let's follow the tracks. You jump on Astidius's back and ride like the wind, following the railroad tracks back into the desert. When you finally catch up, you stand up on Astidius's saddle and leap onto the back of the train like a real badass, just barely catching the edge of the roof and pulling yourself up. Here's hoping you don't have to do that again. Your stuntman could have been killed. 
<laughs> Looks like Alice decided not to join you on account of not having a stuntman, so you're on your own until you get back to Frisco. Phew! Atop the stolen train. Pan fruit? Pickled crackers? Oh no! I don't have enough. Uh, you know what? Let's fight. Let's fight Emperor Norton. I'm gonna one-shot him. Up yours, Emperor Norton. <laughs> Why did, excuse me, Windows? Are you okay? What is this that you even opened? Why, why did you open the search function? I beat the crap out of that guy so hard that Windows got confused and opened my search function for my computer. <laughs> is this game meta? Is Norton trying to take over my PC? I, I would like to uninstall Norton. I don't even have I don't even have Norton on my computer. Beat him so hard I woke up Cortana. <laughs> well, you've kicked this whole Norton problem down the road a ways. I mean, down the train a ways. I mean, he ran a ways further down the roof of the train. Hooray! Oh good, somebody's built a rickety ass bridge between these train cars. Not at all panic-inducing. Hi, boys. Wait, wait, how did you even get on this train? How'd you even get on this train? You know, this is actually taking longer than it would have taken for me to just kill them one at a time. <laughs> Call me the task manager, cause I'm killing Norton! Game was trying to bing what the damage value should have been. You know, that actually does work now, Ku, that, since I have two different hard drives. I got a dining car key, nice. Ooh. You've never wanted anything more in your life than you want to lift up this dome and see what's under it, but you're not sure you can muster the amount of culinary expertise it requires to properly reveal a, d a dish of such presumed quality. Apparently I need 50 mysticism. <laughs> Did lip that. That seems very silly. Hi, Arcoas. How are you doing? Hi. I will correct your grammar, Emperor Norton. By punching you in the face. Get out of here, Norton! Norton went flying off the side of the train. No way you'll make a dramatic recovery from that event! You should head up to the cab and see if you can find some way to steer this thing back to Frisco. Dude, I'm literally 80 XP away from getting safe Kraken. Messily scrawled note. The note says, I've hidden the key to the forward passenger car in my luggage to make it easier for me to murder everyone in the sleeper car. Sincerely, the train murderer. P.S. Come to the roof of the sleeper car in the next 55 minutes if you want a murdering. Okay, so don't go to the roof. <laughs> Crazy! 
Hi, Dr. Shark, how are you? All right, one of these has to belong to the murderer. Uh, sure. He opened the door to the first passenger compartment. The sole occupant's a little boy about 10 years old wearing a blue suit and knickerbockers. Oh, uh, hello, ma'am. Is something wrong? Nothing you need to worry about, kid. I'm on the trail of a bad guy. Do you mean a murderer, ma'am? I'm pretty sure there's one on this train, and they don't call me the world's greatest detective for nothing. What's your name, kid? I probably shouldn't say, ma'am. There might be a copyright thing. <laughs> okay, well, I'm pretty sure I can handle this. Just let me ask you one question, and then you should lock your door after I'm gone. I understand, ma'am. What would you like to know? Are you on the roof of the train? Excuse me? The murderer left a note saying he's on the roof of the train. Are you? I... No, ma'am. I'm in my passenger compartment. Right. Good. That'll be all. Okay, the second one. A man with... A mustache or an oo face. You decide which. I'm gonna go with Uwu face. <laughs> you open the door to the second passenger compartment and look inside. There's a portly man in a dapper gray suit with a tiny, meticulously waxed Uwu face. And not, I'd like to clarify, an enormously bushy Uwu face. Excuse moi, is there some way I might be of assistance, madame? Sorry to bother you, but there's a murderer on the loose, and I'm checking the passenger compartments. Sacre bleu! This is very serious, mon ami. Allow me to proffer the use of you and my little gray self. I don't know what that means, but no thank you. Let me just ask you one question. Why, suddenly I am at your service. Are you on the roof of the train? The roof of the train, madame? Right now? That's right. No, I am here in conversation with you. Good, that, that's it. That's all I needed to know. What about the third one? You open the door to the third passenger compartment and find nobody inside. Huh. Since the note from the murderer said he was going to be on the roof of the train, that means he couldn't be in the passenger compartment. And since there's no one inside this passenger compartment, whoever the compartment belongs to can only, by process of elimination, be on the roof. Which means the person who rented this compartment must be the murderer. Probably. The only clue you find in here is a luggage ticket, though. It has the number three on it. I kind of want to go to the fourth one anyway for fun, so let's do that. <laughs> the only passenger in this compartment is a middle-aged woman who's writing something in a notebook. She looks up as you enter and greets you with a friendly northeastern accent. Um, I don't know what a Northeastern accent would be, to be totally honest. <laughs> Is this supposed to be Nancy Drew? <laughs> or Agatha Christie, maybe. Hi, Arashi, how are you doing? Just make her from Boston? That's the, yeah, that'd be Agatha Christie, right? Murder, She Wrote? That's true, lots of places have a Northeast. Hi, piano player. Uh, I don't know. Why, hello, is this something you need, dear? I'm just gonna talk like this, and I don't know whether or not this is accurate at all. It's probably not, but this is just a joke because it's a video game. Sorry to bother you, ma'am. And I don't want to alarm you, but there's a murderer on board the train and I'm investigating. A murderer on a train? My goodness, that would be a wonderful premise for my next novel. Sure, why not? Anyway, I just need to ask you one question. Go right ahead, dear. According to my evidence, the murderer's on the roof of the train. Are you on the roof of the train? Uh, no, no, dear. All right, thanks for your time. Would you like a meat pie? They're homemade. No thanks. Just have a look at this playing card before you go! No, bye. <laughs> you find bag number three, and it has the key to the forward passenger car inside. 
that very strong corroborating evidence for your theory of who the murderer is. Okay. Oh, it's the train murderer, as advertised! <laughs> and I just realized that I don't remember where this key goes. Oh, it's the door to the next card. It's locked with an unpickable plot brand lock. Okay. Oh, that's the back. Oh, I guess, okay, we are gonna have, dang it! We are gonna have to fight that murderer, but I just, dang it, I'm so close! I hope the murderer gives me 80 or more experience points so that I can also get whatever's in that safe. Oh, the first one was the kid from Professor Layton? I really need to play those. Yes, Dove. Sometimes I really do just love the entire universe. Hi, Taconic. How are you? <laughs> Hi, Harley. Good to see you guys. You need to invest in plot code. They seem to have a lock on the market. I'm gonna fight this murderer. He has a really big knife. Train murderer! Punch him! Dang it! He gave me 60 experience points! <laughs> you rifle through his pockets, they're empty except for his luggage tag. Turns out his tag number is three. Well, hey, I, um. I guess I, I guess I didn't have to do that. I guess I just fought him for no reason. <laughs> you finally make it to the passenger car, one car back from the locomotive, which may be confusing if you thought locomotive meant the entire train, so I couldn't just say the engine, except that also refers to the engine itself, that is, the actual steam engine that makes the train go and not just the frontmost car of the train? Anyway, you're in the passenger car. Suddenly, Norton clambers in the window. He must have dramatically clung to the side of the train in order to reveal at the last minute that he hadn't actually been defeated. Dang it! He runs into the, uh, well, the frontmost car of the train and locks the door. What a jerk! Huh. Maybe you can get some of the passengers to help break down the door to arrest him? Or maybe you just kick the door down and shoot him until he can't bother anybody anymore. That one. I'm definitely gonna murder him. Kill Norton anti-virus. <laughs> We must defeat Norton. I am also very much enjoying the joke that Norton is very difficult to get rid of. <laughs> AOD Talents TV. Hi. Also, yeah, why, why wouldn't I be fighting with a cactus? Cactus is a great weapon. Uh, this guy is totally pranticking, which is a word I just made up that means ranting in a frantic panic. I'm gonna just confront Norton. You pound on the door to the locomotive or engine car or cab or whatever. Open up, Norton. No! All right, then I'm coming in. Oh yeah, you and what I me, lady. You glance back at the passengers. Just me, you crazy old bastard. Na 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 one shot. I win. Well, that's one way to deal with an antagonistic bureaucrat. Not strictly speaking a legal or moral way, but it's hard to argue with success, especially when you're dealing with a crazy old bastard who poisoned your eyes and kidnapped an entire train. You gain 300 XP. <laughs> Oh no, but I don't think I can 
Go in and get the safe now. Darn. That's unfortunate. I'm gonna go ahead and get safe crack in five anyway. You did it! Thanks, boss! No problem. We got the track laid right up to the station now. The first ever cross-territory railroad, thanks to the Manifest Destiny Railroad Company. And principally you! You did a real good job, you did it, Aw, shucks. Don't mention it. Hooray! I did it! Hi, Beast Unleashed. How are you? This game is great. I'm glad to hear you're doing all right, Draconic. I'm having a good day. Thank you for asking. <laughs> there was a one-ray train, so there's no sense in going in there now. The old bronze tramp. Yep, the good old steam tramp. So now the train is useless because it only went one direction, apparently. Now playing the final cutscene. Looks like somebody on that train got a job as the projectionist. Would you like to watch this movie? It's free because movies have only recently been invented and nobody's figured out that they can charge for them yet. Note. Doing this will not change anything about the world of your character. When the cutscene's over, you'll still be right here and you can keep playing if you want. Oh. Oh, this is literally the end of the game. Oh. I mean, I guess that makes sense. We were just on a... Runaway train. <laughs> Hi, Ronan. How are you doing today? I don't know. Hey, chat. Do you guys want to watch the final cutscene now? Or do we want to watch it later? Do what you won't. <laughs> we can watch it now. There's probably still some quests and stuff that we can clean up afterwards. But we can watch it now. Show me the final cutscene. Some folks say endings don't matter. But other folks, they like to know how things turn out. The consequences of their actions, like... With the trains running again, Frisco thrived. People came from all over to seek their fortunes. But thanks to you, they didn't have to do it while on fire because some cow attacked their wagon. <laughs> Yay! Look at all these people living in Frisco. With the railroad completed and Norton ousted, Smee found himself out of a job, but in of an opportunity. After being elected mayor, he managed the growth and infrastructure of Frisco with compassion and pragmatism. In 1944, Frisco was named most reasonable city by the Tuesday Evening Post. Satisfied with the thought of returning to her old life in Boring Springs, Doc Alice opened a free clinic in Frisco and lived out the rest of her days as a practicing doctor. Frisco's loose moral atmosphere and the opening of a mercury mine away is down the peninsula meant she stayed too busy to worry much most days. The clinic was so important to Frisco's eventual counterculture movement that a popular song was written about it. The refrain was, You can get rid of anything you want at Alice's clinic. <laughs> You can get rid of anything you want at Alice's Clinic. <laughs> wow, these are all people waiting in line for the free clinic, including those hippies from the Mushroom Cave. 
Kurtz left the fort and shut up, set up shop in Frisco. His cult <clears throat> fitness group skyrocketed in popularity. Not a cult. The growth was entirely due to word of mouth because the first rule of Kurtzfit is that you cannot stop talking about Kurtzfit. Kurtz till it hurts. <laughs> you solved all of Redwood's problems. With the increase in morale and civic resources, they were able to clear the weeds from the road and fix the well and the broken hitching post. There was even enough left over to give the mayor's office a new coat of paint. Refresh the facade on the buttery biscuit, and add a second story to the bunkhouse. They even managed to get that horse into rehab. Yay! Look at Breadwood, not all messed up! Now the bunkhouse actually has two floors. <laughs> Chuck continued to run his blood and breakfast without incident, accident, scandal, or allegation for many years. <laughs> With your help, Roy Bean's Jelly Bean Museum became the talk of the town. Well, first they had to build a town nearby, but once they did, hoo wee! Yay, look at all these happy people enjoying jelly beans! You were remembered as a local hero in dirt water. Thanks to your efforts, it became twice the town it was before you got there. They even put a statue of you on the main street. It washed away the first time it rained because they made it out of salt, but still, it's the thought that counts, right? <laughs> As for you, after your adventure, you settled in Frisco and bought a very long, very narrow house. You filled it with souvenirs of your exploits and started an antique hat rack collection. When you left home, you told Rufus you wanted to seek your fortune. Unfortunately, you ended your adventure nearly penniless. Oh well, maybe Rufus can find somebody else to look up to. <laughs> it's true, I did kind of end up spending all of my meat. <laughs> but look at my hats though! In 1906, all of the remaining cows in the West were simultaneously activated by some kind of signal from hell! They thundered east, forming a gigantic, single-minded herd! Led by the infernal status, Duke Bovacus! The cow army thundered east toward dirt water! I guess I didn't take care of the cows. Whoops! Fortunately, a gang of rodeo clowns swept in at the last minute and slaughtered the herd just before it reached Dirtwater. Yay, clowns! Unfortunately, all the townsfolk at Dirtwater had a hard time sleeping for pretty much the rest of their lives. Seriously, it was a grisly sight. <laughs> 420 years later! Nice. Deep beneath the ground, ancient machines silently stopped doing the thing they were built to do. It's probably fine. You and everybody you knew are dead by then, and most of humanity has moved to space. Still, though, it's a shame about the planet. There were some cool bars there. Thank you for playing! <laughs> Yay! The credits of loathing. We did it. We beat the game. <laughs> Ebony. Why are the cows coming from hell? Oh no, that's just where they come from in Loathing. Yeah, I like that they recapped the decisions I made at the end. That was really cool. Hi, Shan. How are you? <gasps> Wait, Shan. Oh my god, have you played West of Loathing? If not, you should definitely play this game. <laughs> Aww. Look at all these beta testers, too. You've played a bit of it? It's so good! It's not very long, either. 
Uh, it took me like two and a half streams and I play games really slow. I definitely recommend it. It's really, really funny. They listen to too much Pantera. Hi, <laughs> Zachary, how are you? Also, yeah, Ash, if you, if you wanted to let me know something about the game, please feel free. The end. If you've enjoyed West of Loathing, you might also enjoy our free browser-based game, The Kingdom of Loathing, on the internet. Yay, internet! That was cute. I liked the ending of them showing you what all happened. I'm glad the clowns were there to save everyone from the demon cows. If I finish up side quests, I can watch the final cutscene again to see how it changes. Oh, nice! Yeah, I kind of figured if I if I went and did some more side quests that we might find more things. Plus, I don't know if there's anything... There's got to be some other buildings over here. Let's just wander and see what we can find. Hey, jeweler's cabin. Let's go. Jewelry shop inside. Oh, hello, a customer. Why, hello, welcome to Master Gerald's jewelry shop. Howdy, are you Master Gerald? Oh no, Master Gerald is back there at his workbench. I'm just assistant and translator. A goblin jewelsmith? You betting your britches, Missy, and not forgetting it! He says that's right, the finest jeweler in the territory. Well, yes, I understand goblins, so I don't need translation. <laughs> well, what do you know? I don't see anything on display, though. Master Gerald only does this bespoke work. <sighs> if you bring him a sufficiently Fasinata. valuable gemstone, he'll craft it into a fine ring for you. Poor fee. No trash rocks. But, but, but trash rocks are fun. Draconic? Thank you so much for gifting three months a sub to Shand. <laughs> That's super kind of you. I hope you enjoy the emote, Shand. Oh my god, I actually totally forgot that they came out with multi they came out with multi-month gifting. Three months is phony emotes! Although apparently uh, Streamlabs needs to fix their alerts for it. <laughs> Welcome back, Shand. Thank you, Draconic. I totally forgot that they they recently allowed people, uh, if you gift subs, you now have an option to gift people multiple months subscription at the same time, which is pretty cool. I'm going to give him this unbreakable ruby that I never sold. And I got an unbreakable ruby ring. Which gives me plus seven armor, holy heck. That's really good. That's really, really, really good. Let's go, Stedius. Let's see what else we can find. Oh, you know, I guess I could probably... I could probably figure out, um... More stuff with the El Vibrato stuff. I think I need more batteries. Draconic! Thank you for gifting three months to sub to Shelliac! Welcome back, Shelliac. I hope you enjoy the emotes. Thank you, Draconic! That's super kind. Wandering. Wandering. Hey, this is a minor skeleton. And nice, Alice became stronger from that. Let's see. Yeah, there's gotta be more stuff up here. Nope, he did not have any potions of minor healing.
everything in the circus. I couldn't find anything else to do there. I mean, it's possible I missed something, but... Hi, Ryan. How are you? I guess I could try to solve that one ghost lady's problem. We have a list of open tests? I don't think so. Mm. I don't know, Alice doesn't have any recommendations for me anymore. Oversized chemical beaker. Ooh, lemonade. Yeah. Uh, lemonade. That sounds good. I guess I didn't actually come here. Maybe I just didn't go inside. This is weird. Atop the slab, there's a skeleton shaped indentation with a buffalo skull shaped indentation where the normal human skull shaped indentation should be. It's a good thing to keep in mind if you end up in possession of the bones necessary to fill in the indentation. Okay. You look through the bars and see hundreds of buffalo human skeleton hybrids locked in here. Free to sell. The keys are hanging right next to the door. You can let them out if you wanted, but they all look pretty angry. Okay. These cells are filled with hundreds of crates, each full of buffalo and human bones, carefully sorted. You don't really have anything specific you want to do with human or buffalo bones right now, though. So while you appreciate how organized these guys are, there's not really anything here for you. There are toilets here, for some reason. Bones rule! Okay, there's a place to hide. So that makes me feel like something's gonna happen. <laughs> Buffalo soldier diagram? Huh. Oh yeah, that's right. I think I died last time we came here. I now remember that that is in fact what happened last time we came here. But now this shouldn't be an issue because I can one-shot these guys and I could not before other than Alice. And they should just whiff, other than the necromancers, which now only do two spooky damage. So this is, yeah, no problem. Don't cheat up the clowns, Link. What do the clowns do to you? Nothing. Actually, the clowns 
gnomes were fairly nice to us, even though they were a little bit scary. They didn't do anything to me. Oh, a ton of places in the game are just puns of actual places in Arizona. That's cool. I've only driven through Arizona. I haven't actually stopped anywhere. You know, I guess since I have actually beat in the game. Hey chat, those of you guys who've played the game, do you have any recommendations on maybe some places to go where there might be some stuff I probably shouldn't miss? Oh, well, don't worry, Family Gay. We like humor here. <laughs> How are you today? <gasps> oh yeah, we were gonna look in all the spittoons, even though that sounds really disgusting. You're okay now that you got your stomach to relax. Oh no. I'm sorry to hear you weren't feeling well earlier, but I'm, I'm glad to hear you're feeling a bit better now. I mean, plus... There is funny bones. Oh, nice! We got unlimited bones. The perk. I, I got an unlimited bones perk. You've secured access to an unlimited supply of bones in case you need bones for anything. Actually, there is that one lady at the hippie camp that you can give bones to? Maybe I could talk to her about that. A shirtless man in tight, stretchy pants charges at you out of nowhere. No more, no more mushrooms, no more yogurt, no more exploring my inner consciousness while running in place. I'm gonna kill something, kill it and eat it! You put on your angriest face and puff up your muscles to look real imposing. Hold her right there, you. It isn't working. He's still charging at you. <laughs> did I not finish the carnival games at the circus? I thought I did. I finished, um, I finished all three of the games that you could get the ticket from, I thought. Oh, yeah, I did. I got the pants and exercised earlier, so we got a plus 10 perk to our muscle. So, hi, Mr. Risk. How are you? And yeah, I don't think we finished the Necromancer quest. He did, in fact, have pants that we no longer need. Don't worry, Shaden. Enjoy your work. Thanks for joining us. Oh, can we not get all the spittoons anymore? Oh, yeah, because, oh, I think there's one at the beginning. Hi, Steve. Thank you so much for the 813 sub. Welcome back. How are you today? Um, I don't know. I can give her some regular bones. Oh, I got a bone sword. I got a bone ship ring. Oh, cool, that deals spooky damage. We are Yita Danger Delita. <laughs> okay, well, I guess I can go back to the circus and see if there's something we missed. I thought I did all the carnival games, but... No, because I, I got the 30 Moxie to do that one.
I'm pretty sure I did the mysticality one. And I definitely did the might one. Let me make sure though and equip something to give myself more mysticality. Give it your all. Okay, I guess I didn't do that one. I got a large flesh owl. Oh, it's cute. What a cute owl. Okay, so I guess I had missed that. Okay, the clown still won't let me go in. Yeah, and I remember talking to this guy about that. Yeah, I tried to mess with the clown eggs. And I found out about uh, each clown, like it being taboo to take another clown's makeup. So I was able to talk to this guy about it and he revealed he's actually the same clown. No, I don't have the DLC. Actually, out of curiosity, uh, hey chat, how long is the DLC? Yeah, clown eggs. Apparently, uh, Scala, it is tradition when you become a clown to paint your own egg. <laughs> also, hi, how are you doing? Uh, yeah, that guy won't let us do any more. Yeah, there's like the eggs. This is the one that like makes you all creepy and look like a clown. The only thing I can think of is if we can somehow get rid of this clown, but I don't know. Oh, you thought they were born from eggs? No, no, luckily not born from eggs. That would be a lot scarier, I think. <laughs> Hi, Critter, how are you? Is also the destroyed campsite? Did I find that one? I don't know if I found the destroyed campsite, did I? There's a bunch of space up here and down here that I haven't found anything in yet. And I know for a fact... Wait. Oh, I wonder if I can dress up like a clown. I don't have anything for that, though. Like that one cloud's preventing these guys from killing me. You know, I just noticed, I don't think that the eyeball guy had an option to talk to him before, so let's explore this. Hello there, I'm Yeda. How's it going? Can you talk? Guess not. You take a closer look. You move a little to the side and lean over to the rope to get a closer look at the guy. He's basically just what he seems to be at first glance. A guy with a giant eyeball for a head. You do notice two things, though. First, he has an odd lump with the, well, what you would call the base of his skull if he had one. A sort of crumpled, fleshy mass the size of a fist. With a squint and some imagination, it almost looks like the crushed and shriveled vestigial remains of a human head. 
great. The second thing you notice is that his ankles are locked to the legs of his stool and the legs of the stool are bolted to the floor. So the circus gig, uh, how do you like it? His hands slowly curl into fists and the knuckles turn white with tension. I, I say, uh, understand, I mean, do, do you blank? Or wink, I guess? I guess not. Yeah, so they're obviously all prisoners. of water in the guy's eyes. Sorry that I didn't read that out loud. I thought I had chosen that option before. Okay, well, I'm going to expect the eggs more closely now that that clown's not looking. Since the clown's distracted, you take the opportunity to get a closer look at the eggs. You notice three things about them. Firstly, they're too large to be chicken eggs. You have no idea what kind of eggs they are. Secondly, they've all been broken and then very meticulously glued back together. They almost look like they've been reassembled after something hatched out of them. No! 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 And finally, one of the eggs features a pattern of red triangles that you recognize. It's the same as the clown version of yourself that you saw in the mirror earlier. You quickly step back as the guard clown returns. He gives you a fair amount of side eye, but doesn't say anything. are hatched from eggs. There was an egg for me. Hey, hey, guess what? Guess what? Guess what? The main attraction's ready. <laughs> I don't want to go Barnaby Bob stunt spectacular. I don't want to become a clown. <laughs> I'm scared, Chad. <laughs> I'm scared. I don't like clowns. turned into a clown. break <laughs> but, hi readers welcome i'm spoony i play lots of rpgs this is a game called west of loathing i actually technically beat the game a bit earlier but there were a few side quests and little things that i wanted to wrap up so we're currently working on that one of them was a creepy circus full of clowns uh, I really don't like clowns. 
But here I am. It's a terrible idea, but... <laughs> it's a terrible plan, but here we are. Welcome to clowns. Thanks, Barry. Thank you for the 100 cents. Also, that's terrifying. Hi, Nibelung. Welcome. How are you doing? I hope you guys are all having a great day. Um, I'm just gonna be... I, I need to make myself a cup of tea. Like I said, I have been live for about three hours. And I'm terrified to go into this tent, so I need to steal myself for clowns. For the circus and value. So, don't go too far. If you do, just come back. If you don't, well, there's clowns, so I guess that's understandable. Clowns are scary. We're gonna, we're gonna face clowns together, but... <laughs> I will return in a few minutes. For clowns. Okay, I'll be right back. Mm, clowns! Clowns.
I forgot the clown music was still there. <laughs> Hi, I'm back. 
Who's ready for clowns? <laughs> No, I don't love clowns! Jay, I don't love clowns. You don't love clowns either! Don't give me shit! <laughs> you don't love clowns either, okay? The heckin' clowns. Mm. I feel like soon you are not going to be okay with clowns at the circus either. <laughs> Thank you guys for the welcome back. <laughs> I appreciate it. <sighs> to be fair, you'd use this music for a horror edit. Yeah, I can see that. Yeehaw! Tonawal, thank you for six months. Welcome back. I appreciate it. Hi, how are you today? Have a good night, Shadow. Thank you for joining us. You rest well. Uh, well, clowns. Also, while I was gone, Jay bought and sent me the DLC for this game. <laughs> so we have the DLC now. <laughs> Thank you, Jay. Luckily, the DLC does not involve clowns. I don't know if we'll play the DLC tonight or not, but that does mean we can play the DLC in the future. <laughs> oh no, more West of Loathing. Or does it? I don't know. It says it's a mansion with ghosts, but they could be clown ghosts. <laughs> the clown crosses his arms and grunts when you approach. Ticket, please. Ticket for what? Barnaby Bob stunt spectacular. What's that? The boss does a show. Yes? Yeah. What kind of show? Knife tricks mostly. Here's my ticket. Okay. Go in. Show will start soon. He enters the stage area. Cool. Are you guys ready to get murdered by a clown? Press one for yes. Two for also yes. Three. For extreme, yes. Seven. Four. Man, those are some big yeses. <laughs> Negative 12. Well, you see, unfortunately, clowns don't believe in negative numbers, so... Man, you really want to die by clown. Clowns! All right, let's get murdered by a clown, probably. Yeah, there's no one else here. This is the same muscular clown that was guarding the entrance to the stage area earlier. It doesn't look like he's gonna let you backstage. You can't go through to the backstage area. That hulking clown guard won't let you. Uh, sure, I'll have a seat. You take a seat, and a smattering of other patrons appear and sit down as well. After a minute or two, there's a crash of cymbals, and a clown runs in from the backstage curtain and jumps up onto the stage. In contrast to the other clowns' colorful clothing, this is relatively simple. Black wool trousers and a bright crimson shirt under a pale tan leather jacket with fringe on the sleeves and a red heart painted on the shoulder. His face paint is plain white without any colored accents, contrasting his curled black mustache and thin goatee. A snappy silk top hat with a rackish tilt tops off his outfit. He doffs his hat and bows with a deep theatrical flourish, and the small audience claps politely. The 
Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, and welcome, one and all, to Barnaby Bob's perfectly normal traveling circus sideshow. I hope you've been enjoying the attractions and distractions of our little traveling carnival. And now, it's time for our star performance, the main attraction. Ladies and gents, put your hands together for... A loud drum roll starts as he gestures to the curtain, and then cymbals crash again. The clown puts his hat back on with a chuckle. Me, Barnaby Bob! Applaud. Much obliged, much obliged. You're far too kind. Why, I haven't even shown you anything yet. With a laugh, <laughs> he flips a large bowie knife into the air. You didn't even see where he pulled it from. The knife glitters as it spins. He catches it and flips it in the air again, this time catching and balancing on its point on the tip of one finger. He holds that pose very still for a moment and jerks his hand out of the way. The knife thunks into the wood of the stage floor, deep enough that he has to give it a jerk from side to side before he can yank the blade free. He winks broadly to the audience. Wouldn't be any fun if they weren't sharp, would it, ladies and gents? Clap. Clap, 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 clap. He pulls two more knives from his jacket and begins a flat an elaborate knife juggling act. Three spinning blades somehow turn into four, and then his hat's added into the mix, floating lightly through the cascade of knives without a single scratch. He finishes the routine by catching two of the knives in each hand and allowing his hat to fall nearly to the ground before catching it on the tip of his boot and kicking it back into the air and onto the top of his head. Now there's some applause I believe I've earned. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, it took a lot of hats to get to where I am today. <laughs> he chuckles as he adjusts his hat back to its original rackish tilts. Now for the grand finale. For this, I'll need a volunteer from the audience. A few hands go up. Barnaby Bob ignores them I'm and Captain looks. Bosch von Rotzenberg of Dalmasca. <laughs> he looks at Captain Bosch von Rotzenberg of Dalmasca. <laughs> Thank you, Jeremiah, for the twelve dollar tip. <laughs> Don't believe Barnaby's lies. <laughs> A few hands go up. Barnaby Bob ignores them and looks directly at you. How about you, madam? Well, uh... No, no, don't be shy. We're all friends here, right? Come on up onto the stage. You hesitate, but Barnaby Bob starts up a round of applause and the audience joins in. Reluctantly, you climb up onto the stage. There we go! Not so bad, is it? Your name, please? Yita Delita. It's a real pleasure to finally meet you, Yita Danger Delita. Stand right here, won't you? Uh, big old red flag. How does he know my middle name? I didn't give him my middle name, which is, in fact, Danger, by the way. It's on my ID card. How did he know my middle name? Ollie, how did he know my middle name? I'm scared of this clown, Ollie. I need your help. I guess I will stand here. A couple of clowns haul a large wooden panel about seven feet tall and four feet wide up onto the stage. They stand it up vertically behind you and stay there, holding it steady. It has two holes in it, slightly above waist level, and a lot of knife marks. Press jump back, slide up against the wood, please, and put your hands through the holes. You do so. The holes are just a fraction too high, so it's not very comfortable. 
And then one of the clowns pulls your arms back tighter and ties them together with rough hemp. So it becomes much more uncomfortable for a variety of reasons. Don't worry, this is just to make sure you don't make any sudden and unexpected movements. We wouldn't want that, would we? Uh, fret not miss, everything's under control. He steps up close to you and adjusts your collar. Brushes a little dust off your shoulders. My control? You know, Yida, we get a sharp customer through here from time to time, but my, my, you're the sharpest I've seen yet. Now, Emma, I'd bet a shiny silver dollar I've got something up my sleeve that's even sharper. His pupils narrow to vertical slits as he grins at you, revealing rows of pointed yellow shark teeth. As he turns away, you can see that the heart on the shoulder of his leather jacket is drawn with an arrow through it and the word mom. It doesn't look painted on. You struggle a little, but your arms are too tightly bound. The rough hemp rope digs into your wrists. Barnaby Bob strolls to the under end of the stage and turns to face you. Oh no, don't you worry, this'll all be over soon, just don't move. He has a knife in his hand again and gives it a few twirls and flips. Light reflected from the blade glitters in his eyes. Then, without warning, he hurls at you, at you, thunk! The knife hits the wood before you can even blink. A hair's breadth from your left ear. Barnaby Bob grins at you as the crowd applauds. Another knife appears in one hand and an apple in the other. He tosses the apple to one of the stage hands who carefully balances it on top of your head. Time for the old William Tell routine. A bit of a cliche, perhaps, but there's reason it's a classic, eh, ladies and gentlemen? Let's take a deep breath. The crowd watches with rapt attention as he flourishes the knife, spinning it and flipping it behind his back. Then, faster than you can register, block! Cold apple juice dribbles into your hair and down the back of your neck. Two for two! What do you say, Yita? Shall we go for one more? That's how I feel inside, Ollie. Let's stare him down. Barnaby Bob pulls out another knife and gives it a quick stropping across the pale leather sleeve of his jacket, then whips a colorful spotted handkerchief from his pocket and blindfolds himself. This time, his smile is much colder. I advise you to watch closely, Yida Delita, since you're the only one of us who can! Watch closely. The crowd laughs, but you don't really hear it. The knife spins in his hand, this time, either because of the adrenaline or because he's actually moving slower. You can see the motion of his arm as he throws it. He twists his wrist in an odd way that you don't think he did before. The knife is flying at you. The knife is flying directly at your right eye. He 
he did say don't move. The knife! Incredibly, swerves at the last possible moment! Thunk! You can feel the wood shake from the force as it stabs into the board. The metal is cold against your right cheek. The audience erupts into cheers as Barnaby Bob removes his blindfold and pumps a fist triumphantly. One of the stagehand clouds unties your wrists and helps you get your arms out of the holes. Bob takes your hand and raises it into the air victoriously. Well now, ain't she a good sport, folks? And as brave a target as I've ever had! Take a bow, Yida Delita! You bow to the cheering crowd, carefully keeping your eyes on Barnaby Bob. He bows as well, removing his hat with an elaborate flourish, and he then takes a slip of paper out of it. And as a token of appreciation, I'd like to give our star volunteer a gift, a year's supply of dynamite. Use it in good health. As he hands you the coupon, the clown leans in close to your ear and whispers, This was the only warning you'll get, girl. You got an item. Coupon for a year's supply of dynamite. Barnaby Bob waves and blows kisses to the crowd as you climb down from the stage. And then he disappears through the backstage curtain. The audience gradually disperses. Well, that tears it, doesn't it? It looks like these aren't regular carny stressed as clowns you're dealing with here. These are definitely full blown evil demon clowns, like the ones from the old stories. And they've just given you orders to back the hell off from their operation, so now what? Well, <laughs> well, better hit the old dusty trail. I wonder if I can actually go into this back room. The muscular clown stares at you, but makes no move to stop your aggress. Oh my God. Oh my god, I have to! I have to! You guys! The, the video game is gonna let me confront the evil demon clowns! I have to! I have to do it! This little trailer is probably Barnaby Bob's office. The wagon is old, but maintained well. Brass plaque on the door reads Barnaby Bob, oh, no. confirming your suspicions. It's pink in the window. You see Barnaby Bob sitting at a desk. He seems to be inspecting a large map, but you can't make out any details from here. I will knock on the door politely. You knock on the door. Okay. Come on in, Barnaby Bob calls. You open the door and walk into Barnaby Bob's office. He looks up from his desk, surprised to see you. You? Here I thought I made myself perfectly clear the last time we met, and yet you knock politely and walk straight into the lion's mouth. You are either extremely brave or extraordinarily <laughs> foolish, girl. Both, I might hazard a guess. I've got some questions and they'd answered. And you think I'm going to answer them? If I didn't find you amusing, I'd have vanished you off the face of this earth for what little you know already. I appreciate that, but I just can't leave this situation unresolved. What curiosity did to the cat is going to seem like a Sunday picnic compared to what I'll do to you if you anger me, missy. Go ahead and ask your questions. But bear in mind, I already gave you your fair warning. Who are you? 
The clown smiles sarcastically at you. Why, I'm Barnaby Bob at your service, ma'am. You know what I mean. And if my estimation of your intelligence is not entirely off the mark, you already know the damn answer. You are wasting my time and yours, and you have precious little. I mean, I actually don't know the answer, other than the fact that you're definitely a demon clown, and I feel like this might be a reference to Kingdom of Loathing. <laughs> what are you doing here? Straight to the heart of the matter. Well, no. I had you pegged as a clever one, so why don't you tell me? Well, I actually might know this because of the fact that we already watched the ending of the game and the clowns fought the cows. So I'm gonna go with the, you're here because of the cows. Perhaps you've got a brain rattling around in that skull of yours after all, girl. That's correct. The cows came home, as you say, and we followed them. Why? Why? Don't disappoint me now that you've impressed me, kid. Think about it. Your angel and enemy that you've been fighting since time out of mind up and leaves. No farewell, no postcard. Wouldn't you want to know what the hell was going on? Oh, so the cows and clowns are ancient enemies? Wait, so that means the rodeo clowns were in fact all actually demon clowns. That's, that's interesting. <laughs> you uh, don't know? Dear Rodeo, dear, I've gone and said something I probably shouldn't have. Missy, you are treading on some dangerously thin ice right now. I hope you're thanking your lucky stars I consider you to be essentially insignificant. Okay, let's go. Hmm. I can hear those gears ticking in that three-pound dog's dinner you call a brain miss. Now it's my turn to ask a question. How are you going to convince me that I shouldn't just make you disappear like a fart in a tornado? Well, make it good, Eater Delita. Make it good, because you get one chance at this. Ready? Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna go with it would be a waste of your time, Mr. Clown. Hang on. It would be a waste of your time. You've already wasted so much of my time, girl. I think I can spare a little more. But it is rare that I get to have such a diverting conversation, so I'm going to be merciful. I will allow you to leave here standing on your own two legs, but you will not be returning. If I ever see your face again, girl, I will nail it to my wall and put you to work as the newest member of my freak show. He calls for the guard clown, and it has him escort you back to the midway. You end up face down in the dirt outside the stage entrance. Better stay out of there, you got Barnaby Bob pretty steamed. Well! That was something. That was something. Never in my life did I think I would be rooting for demon clowns. <laughs> That's, wow. I feel like I learned a lot, but did I need to know it? Did I need to know it? <laughs> I'm trying to think of if there was anywhere else I wanted to go. We never found a Mrs. Cactus. I 
have a coupon of dynamite, but we don't need a year's supply of dynamite anymore. That would have been useful back when I... Back when I needed dynamite. Hey, I found the Alamo Rent-A-Mule. Let's go there. Rentals, complaints. Looks like this is where you go to rent a mule. Just judging from the sign, you know. Howdy, welcome to Alamo Rent a Mule. How can I help you? I'd like to rent a mule. Excuse me, but didn't you ride up here on a horse? Yes. So what do you need a mule for? I guess you have a point. Please remember us in the future if your horse breaks down, though. Sure. Wait a minute. No, but... Oh, wait. I have an idea. Can I... Maybe I can tell that one hippie at the Fort of Darkness to come rent a mule. It might be too far, though. I love the walking animations. Yeah, I have a coupon. Dynamite now. Sure. Uh... You find the nearest authorized dynamite retailer and trade the coupon for the explosives you crave. Okay. You open the crate. You got an item. Dynamite 52. Huh. That's a little disappointing. Just one stick a week. <laughs> now I have 72 sticks of dynamite. Let's see, what else? That was... No, not that guy. Not enough dynamite, we need more dynamite. Dynamite! Maybe it was a dude in the first tent? Yeah, it was this guy with his boots, uh... Shoot. Okay, I guess we can't have him rent a mule. Yeah, it needs to be like one a day. Need more dynamite. Well, I didn't talk to the other guy at the Alamo rent a mule. Oh, a curious false mountain. Let's keep going where we were going, but then we can check out the curious false mountain. Oh, great, another customer. As if I didn't have enough to deal with already, what with the paperwork and the heat and the mule bites, and someone keeps stealing my lunch out of the employee icebox, and my trick knuckles acting up again. Gosh. Sure would be nice to go to a little peace and quiet, but no! I gotta stand at this counter all day, and the hardwood floor isn't helping my sciatica, let me tell you. Don't even get me started on what they pay us around here. The mules eat better than I do. Uh-huh. And if all that wasn't bad enough, I went and dropped my daughter's birthday present down a stupid hole in a stupid mine. And will anyone go get it for me? Ha! Yeah, right. You want me to go get it? What, really? Did, did a miracle just occur? I can hardly believe it. Where do you lose it? Oh, not far from here. A place called Deepest Delve Mine. I was looking to scavenge some free string that I have the package with and I dropped it. And of course... Because it's a bracelet, it's round, so of course, it rolls into a hole under some kind of stupid machine. Ugh. Okay, so I feel like his job is complaining. Because it says complaints. It lists a bunch of features you can pay extra for when renting a mule, such as deluxe eyeball wipers, side of coleslaw, sound dampened shoes, anti-lock hooves, cruise control, bot muffler, <laughs> anti-lock hooves, self-kicking tires, Steel belted radials. Fabulous. This year's model. Let's go to the deepest dell of mine. Deep dungeon. 
Oh my god, I will never go to the deep dungeon in Final Fantasy Tactics ever again. Yeah, we're gonna need more dynamite. Well, I don't wanna blow up the clowns because it turns out that they actually helped us against the cows. The Coal Smasher 5000. Toolbox, a gas cap, and a passable cave in. Don't even try to pass it, because you can't. All right. Oh, thank you, Chop. I don't know if I really need to worry about it right now, but if I can't figure it out and I want to, I will definitely ask. Oh, nice. I have all of those things, so I can use the elevator. Also, what's over here? Floor to ceiling shaft. Let's go to level two. <laughs> Leftovers. A nice cupboard, but it's bare. Oh. These cultists are really going to town with the whispering and tracing of spirals in the air, generally being really creepy cult weirdos. They seem too preoccupied with their spooky nonsense to notice you. Unfortunately, they're blocking your path. Well, I guess I'm gonna have to fight them. For you. Ryan C, thank you for gifting five subs to the community. Welcome on in to Hell Demon Venom Ichi Chi Hunt. Okay, I hope you guys enjoy the emos. Thank you, Ryan. You're super kind. Ow! Okay. The cultists hurt. Yeah, that's, that's owie painful. Oh my god, I might die. salts because I have so many of them anyway. <laughs> Not that one. <laughs> Hi, Black Wing Knight. Hi, Kami. How are you guys doing? Alright. We won. Hooray! Barely. We barely won. Ooh, we got a stock certificate and another sarsaparilla. Spelling questionable. Ninja on a ninja. I love Final Fantasy Tactics. I streamed that one. Oh man, I guess like three and a half years ago now, but it's a really good game. I love RPGs, especially Final Fantasy. Um, I, I really like Final Fantasy. <laughs> see, I have 345 unspin XP. I should save up for gumption, I guess. Because that'll increase my AP.
this thing's really heavy. Push it! Push the thing! Oh, hey, child's bracelet. Nice. I don't know what that's for. Oh, wait, we can probably pull that up using the machine. It was up top. You're doing good, Okami. I'm glad to hear that. Oh, thank you for asking. Also, of course you had but a med pack to heal. Oh my god, there's six of these guys? That's a lot. So, I guess if I die, it'll be fine. damage attacks. Super well. I got a perk glutton for punishment. You just can't get enough of losing. You gain experience from fights even when you lose. Thank you, West of Loathing. <laughs> I guess I can just throw dynamite at them until they all die, considering I have 70 of them! Dynamite. Team! 
TNT to dynamite. And now there's only one of them, so. come in handy in this game, Pawnstick. I didn't even know I was going to play West of Loathing. The shaft really got shafted by a cave-in. Looking at this altar makes your stomach spin. The central spiral has a nauseating optical illusion effect that makes it look like it's spinning, even though it isn't. You feel like if you get too close, you might fall into it. You don't like these spirals. Nope, 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 you don't. Alright, let's go to level four. Home indeed. Hi, Cavo. How are you doing today? There's a whole crowd of cultists here muttering and doing creepy Tai Chi. They don't seem to have noticed you. Not yet, anyway. Yup, that's a lot of cultists. Okay, I'm gonna spam more dynamite at them. This is gonna take a while, but that's okay. Because if I don't use my dynamite now, I already beat the game, so when am I really gonna use it? I do kind of feel like dynamite should be an AoE though. Or to make me deal more than 20 damage, but I suppose they couldn't make it too OP. Ration, JD. In what universe do I need to ration? Certainly not this one. Bonk. All right, this should be enough, and then I'll kill one more guy with my regular melee, and I think we should be able to handle four of them just fine. Yeah, luckily this isn't D&D, &D, so for some reason we haven't had to eat at all in this game. I mean, eating gives you buffs, which has certainly helped, but I wouldn't die if I didn't eat. I do also have unlimited grain, it's true. My pockets are very deep. You're doing good, guarding some space your tour is nice. How long have you been streaming? Like today or in total? In total, I've been streaming, it'll be five years in August. Honk. Luckily, we'll still be fine without Alice. I think. I'll set this guy on fire. Oh, all right. I guess I won't set that guy on fire. Oh, no, he is set on fire. Okay. He's very on fire.
Although really that's kind of pointless because I would rather him be dead. Hopefully this doesn't kill me. It did! Hooray! I died. I still got XP though. <laughs> we still got XP! Poggers! There. Now I should take less damage too. Wait. Oh, okay. I was like, where'd I go? I guess we're gonna use all of our dynamite. I don't know, Chop. That's a good question. There's really no consequence for losing fights. stuff that I didn't use that I could have used, but I went, I better save this. What if I need it? But don't we all? Oh, bye, Alice. for the past two turns or we would be but now he's dead instead goodbye cultists i am i am just that good apparently oh hey look this pile of rocks is really seriously mortared together luckily we have a pickaxe and we do have 50 muscle there's a trapezoidal piece missing from the crossbar Oh, I don't have one of those. Hi, Master Coder. How you doing? I don't think Alice has much defense or health, to be honest. She's really good against skeletons, though. little health these snakes have. 
and how they have decided to attack me. Also, how did that snake whiff and still hit me with poison? That's confusing. Luckily, it's irrelevant. Okie dokie. I need a key. All right, the professor's looking at stuff. All right, let's go back to the deepest delve mine and see if we can fit a key into there. Oh, an old engagement ring. You're doing pretty good, Decoder. I'm glad to hear that. I'm doing well, thanks for asking. Okay, so we're gonna go back down to the fourth floor and see what we can get here. Nice, Nehru! We inserted a keystone. The shaft goes down further than you can see. The cross-taped El Verbato device is going crazy. Place it in the machine. It snaps into place of its own accord. Ooh. The sign says a bunch of stuff I can't read. Um... Yep, I can't read that either. Huh. Okay. That seems unusual. actually gonna tell me anything or nope he's still gonna look at this cube he's still just gonna stare at this cube okay don't know what any of this is about but uh thanks for your help professor <laughs> let's go to the curious false mountain have a good night ninja Ooh, I also found a curious flat plane. We will check that out next. Curiouser and curiouser. Oh wait, there's a pile of rocks there. Nope, okay, not actually anything. Oh boy, eyeballs. Uh, the snakes in that stack of rocks are not gonna let you through here. The heck they ain't! They need their last haw. Hi, Will. And before you get blessed in the limited edition Destiny package, did you buy it? It looks really cool, but I'm probably just going to get the digital deluxe. I feel like I can't really justify spending the money on the really big, crazy deluxe one, especially since I'm buying so many other games this year. 
You did? Yee! You and Brian will have to send everybody pictures of how awesome it is. Well, at least these snakes can't hit me at all. That's a plus. You just want your drifter duck? Wait, does it come with a drifter duck? Or is that something you can buy separately? Or was it a joke? Is that real? Can you really buy one? If so, can they please make a Saint 14 duck? And a Shack duck? Oh, it's separate. I did buy the Shaq's plushie. I bought that Shaq's plushie, plushie almost immediately after I saw that it existed. I also bought the Destiny 2 mask because it looked really nice. Oh, they have a C14 one! Oh no! <laughs> oh no, my wallet! <laughs> Hang on, I, yeah, I gotta see this. I, I gotta see that. Destiny 14. Oh my god! Saint 14 makes a weirdly adorable duck! <laughs> Look at his little bathtub! Oh my god, that's so cute! Oh no, that's so cute. Oh no. How? Uh, oh, it's only 13 bucks! That's not even that bad! Oh, it comes out in September. Collect all seven. <laughs> That's not even that bad. Thirteen bucks. Yeah, I might, I might, might have to get myself the Saint Fourteen one. There's something strange about these rocks. Investigate. Some of these rocks aren't real. They vanish as soon as you look at them closely. This thing has a job to do, and it isn't going to take any of your guff. Put that guff right back in the bag and make sure you use a twist tie so it doesn't get stale. I want to tag it. Ah. Chat watches as Spoonie makes impulsive purchases. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe, Scala. Don't at me. <laughs> Empty your wallet, but fill your heart. Hi, Ruru. Hi, Vero. How are you guys doing? Oh, there's a cylindrical play piece here that's very obviously broken. Replace it. You pop out the broken cylinder and replace it with the one you found. The machine whirs to life with a riot of blue lights and weird noises. Uh. I don't know what this means. Insert battery. A matter? Okay, I learned the thing for matter and system. I... This is definitely one of the largest hexagons you've ever seen. Yo, this is scary. At you! <laughs> All right, Scala. All right. I'm not coming at you for, you know, finishing things and then immediately looking into character creators. But here we are. All right, let's check out the Curious Flat Plane. Uh, the middle of the woods is not where you expect to find a goblin with a big pompadour haircut. Wearing a spangly sequin suit and cape and doing a dance that involves a lot of pelvis thrusts and butt wiggling, but yeah, that's what you found. Uh, hello? 
<gasps> Why, hello there! Glad to meet ya! Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. I don't know what's real anymore. Maybe not here to me being Galvis, big time goblin entertaining girl. Pleasure to meet ya. What you to doing? Singing? Out here in a forest for a practicing. Here the song to wanting? Uh, sure, Galvis. The goblin sings a rowdy honk tonk, honky tonk style song that you can't follow very well, but it seems to be about either a jail or a hotel and either some shoes or a dog. <laughs> Insult them. This singing's terrible. What? Oh no! No human is wanting to hear it. Then human's not knowing a good music. Human music way better is. Not sounding like a dog's eating a cat's. The angry goblin throws his boots to you and chases you away. You got an item, flashy boots. I insulted Goblin Elvis. And I got some flashy boots. I keep going, but I'm not animated for climbing. This ladder is missing about 70% of its rungs. So dangerous, call OSHA. Climb down anyway. Ooh, I got an El Vibrato rod, some scraps, and a punch card. Another large hexagon. Oh no! I don't have another battery, and I don't have a replacement part for that. There's so many, like, bits and bobs that go into this weird future quest that I don't understand. I also don't remember where the punch card stuff was. I think it was the humming cave, but I'm not really sure. Yeah, this seems like such a big quest that's completely optional. I don't know if I'm really gonna finish it or not. It does seem a bit more vague, which is not really a problem. Oh yeah, I needed a keystone for that and I forgot about it. That looks dangerous. Huge cave in. Oh yeah, this is the one where I needed another battery. Yeah, this game really does have a lot of content. Okay, I actually needed two batteries total, so that works out. I needed one for the humming cave and I think one for the curious flat plane. And then there's still, there's another piece in the flat plane I think that I, I don't have anything for. Oh, this game's only like 10 bucks. Pretty rad. Insert battery. Construction, bracelet, central. Okay. Yeah, it's not on Humble Bundle, but I believe it's on both Steam and the Nintendo Switch. Over and over, Lazic, 
Puzzcrow. Hmm. These seem like location teleporters or something. I think it was the abandoned well that had... Yeah, the abandoned well had all that other stuff. It had that number puzzle. numbers, but... Okay, this is... Alright, this was just teaching me that. This seems sound-based, actually. Return north cash fluid power primary current nuisance online weather decrease source detected leg wear south secondary select solar footwear destruction all right I learned a lot of words need another battery for that one I have no idea! I have no idea. Alright. There's really only one other thing I want to try. We are going to take a nap. Apparently in our dream we get married to an elephant. And we are going to go back to Reboot Hill and see if Penelope happens to be the granddaughter that is that grand that lady's favorite. And if it's not, then I don't know and I, I give up. I think I think she was uh P Penelope? It was, apparently it wasn't Penelope either. I don't know. I literally have no idea. I have no idea who her favorite granddaughter is. Oh my god, are you- wait, are you serious? Wait, is that her? Rebecca's name? I want to ride my chocobo all day. Oh, hi. Genova! Thank you for resubbing for three months. Welcome back. I appreciate it. How are you? Oh yeah, we need to give the complaint guy the bracelet. I forgot about that. Also, there is a gang of skeletons. One of them has a pair of glasses, and that's kind of adorable, actually. Hi, Meander, how are you? Whip! 
Look at your wiggly arms. Wiggly, wiggly, wiggly arms. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Wiggle the arms. All right, I'm sorry, Mr. Glasses. You're gonna have to die. That's like all these skeletons are doing is wiggling. It's kind of cute. Okay, goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Skeletons. Uh, I got a sweet sword. didn't realize this was over here but yeah I have no idea no idea about that lady uh, Alamo Rita Mule we'll turn in that bracelet changed actually but we can watch the ending cutscene again to see uh well yeah i found i found your daughter's bracelet well thanks a bundle it's a real tragedy there's so few selfish and kind-hearted people like you in the world willing to do a hugely dangerous favor for a total stranger without any expectation of reward yeah sure uh okay all right, okay. Well, that seemed pointless. <laughs> that seemed pointless, but here we are. Okay, well, I... I don't know what else, what else to do, man. You had a bit of a headache and apparently took a nap, but you're surviving. Oh, well, I, I hope your headache goes away soon. Yeah, I um, I finished the game earlier and I just kind of went back and did some side questy stuff. Western Loathing's really good. <laughs> it is a very good game. I also have the DLC, although I think we're gonna probably save that for another night. What's the sea skull? A skull draped in seaweed and festooned with beach glass. Drown with me, it seems to whisper. No? Thanks, I don't want to drown. I always want to hear something cool, Okami. Alright. Let's see if anything different happened. Alright, Frisco thrived. Mm-hmm. We found a job. Doc Alice opened something, a, a clinic. Yep, Kurt's fit happened. We had solved all of Breadwood's problems. Chuck ran his blood and breakfast. Roy Bean's Jelly Bean Museum was successful. We're a local hero. I don't have a lot of money, which is fine. Cows came. Oh, okay. The clowns do still go in at the last minute and slaughter the herd. Oh. Well, okay. We didn't successfully build the machines still because I didn't understand them. All right. Nothing changed. <laughs> I side quested, nothing changed, and that's fine. I have no idea how any of that stuff works. Maybe we will figure that out another night. A friend of yours was on the news tonight. Oh, cool. But the future refused to change. <laughs> all in all, I really enjoyed West of Loathing. This is a very solid game. 
and it fitted her schedule really well between Xenoblade Chronicles and Paper Mario, so I'm super glad that I played it. Thank you guys again, not only for the original suggestions to play it, but also thank you for joining me for it. Very enjoyable. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. I'm probably just gonna go ahead and highlight the whole game, because it's pretty great. 